Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I'm currently in the middle of a Nova year. I have a lot of empties to talk about. That's what today's video is going to be. These are all of the products that I used up in the month of September. I have quite a lot, so I'm just going to get into it. I will put timestamps below for like the general categories. I've grouped them so I can talk about them in categories. Along the way I'll give sort of mini reviews, whether or not I liked it. I'll let you know if it's something that I used up in a category and whether or not I needed to repurchase something for it. Let's get started. I'm going to start with hair care items. This first thing is the Bumble and Bumble Sunday shampoo. Now I like this. It does actually make your hair feel very clean. What I didn't realize when I purchased it is that it's not safe for color treated hair and I dye my hair. So how I ended up using this up is I would just use it on the last wash before dyeing my hair. So actually just recently, well today, this morning, I dyed my hair. So yesterday when I washed my hair, I used this to get everything out of it. And then like after I've washed my hair, I'll condition, but then I don't put any products in it. So then the following day, I can then dye my hair. So yeah, I like this. I would recommend it if you're someone who doesn't color treat their hair. Because it's not safe for color treated hair, I won't be buying this again. I used up this little hair mask. It's the Function of Beauty for wavy hair. I believe this was like a code thing um, for a Sephora order for when I needed to rebuy the Polish Choice, the uh, BHA toning thing. Um, I got two uses out of it. I seemed to like it just fine. It made my hair feel nice. It was moisturizing enough and after I used it I did try to like not straighten style my hair like I tried to let it air dry and do its natural like curly wavy thing so I think it maybe helped a little bit with that. Would I ever buy a full size of this? Probably not. I find that there are other hair masks that get the job done just fine um, especially that that like moisturizing one that I get off Amazon so I would probably buy that again before ever buying the full size of this. Alright, uh, hair styling item. Wow, I couldn't find the words. The Moroccan Oil Dry Texture Spray. It worked just like any other dry texture spray that I've ever used. The scent of it was quite nice. I don't know that it did anything absolutely amazing that would make me rush out and buy this particular brand again. I do have other dry texture sprays that I'm working through so I don't need to go buy another one right now and I'm not sure that I would necessarily go to this one. It does smell nice maybe if they were on sale or something but I find a lot of the drugstore texturizing sprays seem to work just fine and also the Bumble and Bumble. I guess I don't know what the price comparison is between the Bumble and Bumble, the uh, dry spun texture thing and this are um which actually i think i would probably buy the bumble and bumble before i would buy this one again all right that's it for hair care moving on to skin care i'll start with eye creams i finally finished up this clinique all about eyes serum it was the second one in a duo that i had purchased and I say I finally used it up because I kind of just didn't like using it. It has a rollerball applicator, so it feels pretty cooling like when you're using it, but I don't think that it did anything magical. It says it's a depuffing eye massage. I don't think it actually depuffs. My my under eyes don't get too puffy anyways. They often just feel like dehydrated. So I don't think this is necessarily targeted for me anyways. If you just want to put something quick on to like feel like you've done something, then maybe you would like this. But otherwise, 
I wouldn't ever buy this again. Okay, a sample of the Clarins Total Eye Smooth Firming Wrinkle Smoothing Eye Balm. I got probably three or four uses out of this. It's quite nice. It has that typical Clarins scent to it, which I don't mind. I would have to look into what the actual price of the full size of this is before knowing whether or not I would buy it, but it was decent enough that I would look into buying the full size. And then I did this little sample of the Rose Ink Eye Revival Brightening Eye Cream. It was fine. It has kind of like a peachy uh, tint to it. I don't know that it was necessarily brightening at all. Um, if I want a brightening eye cream, I much prefer the Origins Ginseng, the one that's like pink and illuminating and it's not shiny, but anyways, I would much rather use that. Um, I, so no, I won't be buying the full size of this. Josie Marin Argan Beta Retinoid Pink Algae Serum, 2% Pro Retinol and Quercetin. I don't think I noticed anything from this. Um, I wasn't really that consistent in using it, like I would use it a night and then not use it for like a week or two and then use it again and then not. Um, I don't think I would buy the full size of this. Youth to the People, the Triple Peptide and Cactus Oasis Serum. This felt really nice. Um, one thing that I did notice when I started using it is that the level of fluid, like when I started using it, was already down to here so I don't I don't know if it's because I had it for a long time which I don't think that I necessarily did but just kind of a bummer that I didn't get like a full size or a full amount of the deluxe size anyways it felt really nice on my skin um, I think it was quite hydrating I don't know if it really plumped or firmed anything I would consider buying the full size of this if I stopped liking all of the other things that I use to hydrate. So maybe I'll revisit this once I get my skincare like streamlined a little bit more. But for now, I don't need anything in this place, so I won't be buying it. Bare Minerals Skin Longevity Long Life Herb Serum. It was fine. It did have quite an herby scent to it. To be honest, I just felt like it was a liquid step in my routine or like <laughs> just a added layer of wet. So meh, I probably wouldn't ever buy the full size of this. I kind of have a weird thing with makeup brands that then decide to put out skincare, which that may be unfounded. And like there are some brands that have both makeup and skincare that I don't mind using both from like Make Beauty for example or uh is there anything else I guess In Beauty project they have like kind of some makeup stuff I guess all of it kind of technically leans towards skincare even like the like lip oils I don't know so maybe it's just this that I'm thinking about or like oh like Urban Decay or isn't it Tarte and maybe Too Faced that have come out with like some skincare type stuff I don't know that I would ever purchase skincare from brands like that and that just kind of it reminds me of what this is is Bare Minerals I will always view as a makeup brand first I'm not necessarily going to them for skincare needs, so would I ever buy the full size of this? No. Okay, a little sample of the Caudalie Vino Pure. I believe I've used several others of these. I think it's fine. It all, Caudalie stuff always smells really nice, so it smelled nice and it felt nice putting it on my skin. I would have to research a little bit more as to what it claims to do and like maybe what the benefits are versus like the price and stuff so I don't know where this would fit in my skincare routine if I choose to get it um, I would look a little bit more into it first but I don't really need um, a serum thing right now so I won't be buying it I used this little sample of the Olay hyaluronic and peptide 24 hydrating gel I did not like this um, <laughs> I have found 
and maybe it's just like the water gel type texture that has a tendency to do this but when I used it and then tried to put makeup on it pilled like crazy for that reason alone I wouldn't ever buy the full size of this but I also just don't think it's hydrating enough for my skin needs so I'd say skip it all right another serum the good molecules hyaluronic acid serum this is not the first one that I've been through. I believe this is like the second or third of the jumbo size that I've gone through. And then I've used several other of the like normal sized things of this. It's just a great hyaluronic acid at an affordable price. I have not repurchased it. I don't know if I would repurchase it again at this point. I kind of want to get my skincare to a place where I can use fewer products that have like more ingredients in each product as opposed to just like having to put eight different things on my face because each of each one of them is like a single active ingredient type product. If down the line I come to realize hyaluronic acid is something that I need to incorporate that isn't in another product that I'm using or something this would probably be the one that I purchase. Moisturizer, the Pharmacy Honey Halo Ultra Hydrating Ceramide Moisturizer. This is the second jumbo of this that I've been through and I've gone through several others of like uh, minis and just like normal size. This had been like my favorite moisturizer. I also just really enjoy the scent of it and I do just find that it's super hydrating. I have one more like mini size of it that I'm going through right now, um, but I also have other moisturizers that I have yet to use up. Would I buy this again? Maybe. I have another moisturizer empty, which I guess I'll just talk about now, the Phytosurgeon's Verdant Force Field. This is just a really great all-round moisturizer and it's got green tea licorice root centella phas allantoin and panthenol it just like almost acts as a skin reset like if my skin is acting up or feeling super inflamed i know that when i use this it'll help calm it down i think this might be my new like top of the line moisturizer to use so because I've fallen back in love with this, I don't know if I would repurchase this. And also price, I guess I would have to compare price per ounce and stuff to like see how it all works out. But this, in my head I'm viewing this as more affordable. I'm not sure if it actually is in terms of like price per ounce or whatever, but this jumbo size of this is like $70 and that's quite expensive especially for moisturizer that you use, you know, twice a day. Sometimes if my skin is feeling extra dry, I'll put on like two layers of moisturizer. So I don't know if I want to be spending that much on this. But I think this would be a nice splurge wanting to feel pampering or whatever, just because I just, I also just really love the scent of this, the honey scent. It just like, feels cozy. I don't know. So yeah, these two moisturizers I used up. Okay, I finished this Lash Food Conditioning Chamomile Eye Makeup Remover. I found it kind of half empty in the back of a drawer. It's one that's like a dual phase, so it's supposed to be good at removing waterproof makeup. I don't love using liquid like a liquid like this that you'd have to put on like a cotton pad or something to remove mascara so I use this up basically just removing swatches from my hands and I wouldn't buy this again I don't think I would ever buy like a dual phase liquid type product again just because I know that I prefer using a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil to take off my makeup and specifically waterproof mascara so no. The other cleanser that I finished is the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. I feel like I've talked about this ad nauseum. I probably have had one of these in each of my empties videos. 
since they reformulated it, it's no longer my favorite. I am now on the hunt for a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil and I have actually purchased, which like I kind of stretched the rules a little bit, I purchased a cleansing oil and a cleansing balm because like they're kind of different things but they perform the same task but I didn't want to end up with something like with one thing that like didn't work so like I stretched the rules for that and I'm okay with it but I am just like trying to now find something that I like. I did I think in my last empties I had used a mini of the pharmacy cleansing balm and I did like that so that's kind of a contender and then I have used like I have used other cleansing oils and stuff in the past so it's more of just like deciding whether or not I want to revisit that or try something new for now I have tried new things the cleansing oil I bought now I can't remember what it is. It's an. Now I can't remember if it's like a K Beauty or a J Beauty, but I got it off of Amazon for like twelve or fifteen dollars or something. So that's the cleansing oil that I went with, and then the cleansing balm was. Oh my goodness! Now I can't remember the name of that either. But I bought it off of Ulta, and I didn't realize, but it was forty five dollars. And honestly, if that's the case. Like, if I was willing to pay the 45 on that, I should have just gone with the pharmacy one, I think. Okay, the cleansing balm that I got is uh, Herborian Santella Cleansing Balm. It's a Korean skin therapy brand, whatever. I have to be honest, um, it's not my favorite, and it makes me quite glad that I ended up getting that cleansing oil as well. Um, when I use it, I have to work... Like, it takes a very long time to work it into my eyelashes in order to make the mascara come off, which isn't great. Like, the old formula of this, I feel like I would barely have to go over my eyes and it would all come off, which is why I was bummed when they reformulated this, because the newer formulation, I have to work more at my eyelashes in order to make the makeup come off, which is why I went on the journey of finding a replacement in the first place. So, all that said, I have repurchased things to replace this, and at some point I'll probably do a video on, like, all of the cleansing balms and oils that I've used and what I like and what I prefer. There have been quite a few that I liked in the past that, like, fell off the face of the earth, so sometime down the line I'll probably do a video about that. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see it. Alexandra suggested it, so that makes me think that... She you'll probably want to see that. At some point, it will be coming. Last skincare morphing into makeup item, the SOS, or the Tower 28 SOS spray. This was the last of, I had purchased the like jumbo bottle of it to keep refilling this and this was the last of that. I just like using this if I have just breakouts galore that are going crazy and won't go away. I start using this and it tends to help get it go to go away faster. Just recently I was having some issues on my chin. Part of it was hormonal, part of it was like stress related, part of it was me picking at my skin but like it kind of got out of control so I just was pretty diligent about using this to spray it down and it helped go away. I have not repurchased this because I had or I have actually two spray bottles of, it's the same ingredient, the hypochlorous acid. I had, um, I had purchased it from Amazon, this brand, and then for whatever reason a couple months later I bought it again because I forgot that I had it because I stuck it in a drawer and forgot about it. So I have two bottles of that that I'm working through and it's the hypochlorous acid. And those were significantly cheaper than what this Tower 28 one was, so if I decide that I want to keep using that in my routine, I would probably go back to the brand that I got on Amazon rather than this. Okay, now into like makeup makeup stuff, the Smashbox Air Primer Water, the 
setting priming spray whatever I like the scent of this air one better than uh, what was the last one that I used the fire is that right I don't think they make this scent anymore so I can't repurchase it and I have some other setting sprays that I'm currently going through I kind of just use setting sprays not necessarily to set my makeup I believe I've talked about this before but if I feel like I've gone a little bit overboard in powder products or just like I, I use it just to like sort of melt everything together and get it cohesive so to me like kind of anything can work I kind of lean towards I think maybe the max fix or the mac fix plus as being just a contender of like a repurchased item other than that like there are quite a few setting sprays at the drugstore that kind of get the job done that I want it to so Smashbox doesn't necessarily need to be the one that I buy again on to more makeup stuff I kind of just threw this in here it's a it's just a makeup sponge I cut it in half because I was curious as to like what was going on in the inside I try to get rid of sponges after like three to five months of use I typically know when it's time to get rid of it because like the makeup starts to stain it like you can't get it looking clean anymore and that's sort of like the clue of when it's time to move on so this is just one that I had got in a pack from Amazon I have other sponges so I don't need to buy any more right now but this one was fine it got the job done in beauty the face glaze I finally finished it it was fine it did the job I liked using it for a little while but then I sort of rediscovered my love of the auric glow lust and I used the two in the same way as like a priming step of my makeup so I probably won't buy this again and I don't need to because I have the auric glow lust and I also have the elf halo glow and the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter or whatever so this was good while i used it but i've kind of just moved on from it eyebrow stuff patrick ta brow lamination gel it started getting goopy so that's when i know it's time to throw it away it starts to like leave gloops in my eyebrows and it turns like a it starts to be like a whitish gloopy color as opposed to being clear which is when I know it's time to throw it away I think this is just like my hands down all-time favorite brow gel it holds them in place it does when you have it on it feels a bit um, I don't know if crunchy is the right word but like it feels hard <laughs> in your eyebrows but that's also just how I know that it's keeping them in place. I do have a backup of this and I actually just found a backup of the NYX brow glue which I had used one of those previously and it was okay and then like halfway through it I decided that I needed a backup even though by then I had figured out that this was my new favorite so anyways I don't need another brow gel product right now the NYX glue I wore it today that's why I'm feeling my eyebrows it doesn't fully set in the way that the Patrick Ta does which is why I don't prefer it and it's one of those things where like so I do my makeup first before I get dressed and depending on like the shirt that you wear if the shirt touches your eyebrows like with a different eyebrow product it sort of like brushes them down and then you have to like go kind of fix it with the brow or with the Patrick Ta it doesn't do that which is why this is my favorite so favorite would I purchase it again yes have a yes this which all of the writing has pretty much wiped off from it the brand is Ardell I don't think that they make this anymore but I do have several backups like at least two backups of it I think because when I saw that they were going on like super clearance at Meijer I bought a whole bunch this was like 
even who was it two years ago I feel like I've had them for quite a while I don't know if they're gonna be dried up by the time I open one of them we'll see it's a pen but it has like a forked um, it's a felt pen but it has like a two prong it works a bit in the way that the brow other brow pens that I have used and like and just the color of it is quite nice which I don't know what the color name is because it has all rubbed off but the color of it is also what makes me like it so this Ardell thing yes it was good and I have I had bought backup so I do have more of these to use so good product and then two more brow pen products the NYX lift and snatch brow tint pen uh, these are two different shades, Espresso and Ash Brown. Okay, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this product. I've used, like, others in the past. Like, these are not the first ones of these colors that I've used. I feel like from pen to pen, it's hit or miss as to whether or not it's going to be how you like it. These two in particular, I feel like... Well, one of them sort of like leaks out in globs, but then like it's not coming through the pen part. It's like leaking out the top part. It's just really weird. So like sometimes like no color product is coming out and then other times it's like gushing out and hard to control. So I don't know what's happening with the packaging of this because I've used and I have been using the Milani same style it's a pen it's got like the brush hairs it's not a felt pen and I've never had an issue with that like in the same way that I've had issues with these so I don't think that I would buy the NYX ones again I would much prefer the Milani and I do have a backup of that from like last year that I had purchased and then I also have those other Ardell ones so I won't be needing like a brow colored product for quite some time but it won't be the NYX ones that I go to. A mascara, the Maybelline Rocket Waterproof. Um, it's not necessarily gone, gone, but I had had it open for quite some time and it was starting to dry out to the point where it wasn't performing as well as I like it to perform, so it's time to toss it. I have other mascaras open and I still have a couple more backups from like way back when. However, I have been noticing when I've been opening a backup that I had it's kind of just like already dried out and not performing great so just kind of goes to show <laughs> that I should not be buying backups upon backups because by the time I get around to actually using it it's probably not good anymore so would I buy this particular one again yes it's one of my favorites but I don't need one right now ritual defeat Eros it is finally gone it took Quite some time but I kept chugging away at it and I finally finished it I really like this product I like the formula of it and I really liked the color Eros for like a brontour type shade it's just a great color for me because it's like a rosier type brown um, it just works well with my complexion and I would probably buy this again if I didn't have other contour bronzer products to go through but ritual defeat this is great and i have several other colors in this formula the um the inner glow cream pigment the other colors that i have are like more blushes although i do have the intuition shade which is like a straight contour for me but this is just a really great cream cheek formula hourglass products so these are the ambient lighting powders so I went through dim light, ethereal light, and mood light. Some of them, like ethereal light, if you can tell, there's still like a tiny bit of product in the corners, but it's just kind of difficult to get to with a brush. And I know that these are like years and years old, so I feel good and accomplished about just getting rid of them now. They have definitely fulfilled their purpose in my makeup collection 
and these are just great finishing powders. Dim Light is a little bit darker, so if I'm using it, I tend to use it in like bronzer positions on my face. Mood Light is kind of just an all-round, if I'm feeling quite pale or like, like, ew looking and feeling, it's got, it's like a pinky, purpley, um, tint, I guess, to it. So it's kind of just good as like an all over the face warming up, I guess. And then Ethereal Light is basically just like white, translucent, I guess, but, um, just like an all over face finishing powder. So these are great. Would I buy them again? Probably, but I do have a couple others and I have, like I have a face palette that has the dim light in it and maybe another one that has something else. And then I still have the full size of the diffused light that I'm working through, but I have hit major pan on it. So that will be my next project to finish. But these are great and yes I recommend them and I would buy them again. Alright those are all my empties for the month of September. I went through quite a lot and I actually quite like that I went through so many makeup products. I feel pretty good about that. Let me know in the comments if you've used any of the things that I've talked about and whether you liked it or hated it or anything in between. I would love to read about it. Just real quick I guess on my eyes I have the Blend Bunny uh, dollhouse palette and then on my lips I used the NYX prune lip liner and the elf matte color lip in the shade T rose and I'm really liking just this overall combination like the purple and orange eye with like the mauvey lip I'm really digging it I will leave in the description everything else that I have on my face if I remember to do that if you're new here and you made it through the entire video, thank you. You should subscribe. If you've watched me talk about all of my trash, you should definitely subscribe and stick around for more videos. I would love to have you. If you liked this video and liked hearing me talk about my trash, hit the like button. That would be cool. And that's all I've got, so I will see you in the next one. Bye!